Now we've seen both two and three input Karna maps. I want to show you how to make a four input Karna map. So for the four input Karna map, I like to write this diagonal line. I put A and B over here and I put C and D. So these are our uh, four inputs. Now um, the input combinations for A and B are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. So I counted here in gray code, so I have only one bit change between each number iteration. I'm going to do the same thing up here for C and D. Input combinations are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So then every cell of my corner map table is going to correspond to a location in the, a row on the truth table and um, a min term with four literals. So what would those be? This first cell is when A is 0, B is 0, C is 0, and D is 0. So this is 0, 0, 0, 0 input case. So this is min term 0. Likewise, this is 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is min term 1. Now since we put this in gray code, um, this next case here, if this is 0, 1, this isn't 2, it's actually 3. So we have to skip over for min term 2. This is 0, 0, 1, 0 is min term 2, and then come back for min term 3, 0, 0, 1, 1. So if this is min term 3, that makes this min term 4, min term 5, skip 1 for min term 6, and back for min term 7. Now we constructed um, the the columns in gray code order, but we also constructed the rows in gray code order. So that means if this is our first row of min terms and this is our second, we need to skip a row for our third and come back for our fourth. So that means if this is um, min term seven, min term eight is actually down here. And this is min term nine, skip one for min term 10 and back for min term 11. And then we come back up to this row for min term 12, min term 13, skip one for min term 14, and finally min term 15 is in this location. So this is how we have to construct our K map in order for our groupings to do a reduction. So it's important that you make sure to do this in gray code with only one bit flipped at a time instead of just regular binary coded decimal counting um, from zero to three. Okay, great, so let me show you um, an example. In this example, suppose we are given our function f as um, um, sum of products form. I'm going to do the full expansion. Since there are 16 places on this table, it's going to be pretty big. So let's just suppose that f is a, b, c, d, where a, b, and c are complemented, or a, b, c, d, where a and b are complemented, or a, B, C, D, where A, B, and D are complemented, or A, B, C, D, where C and D are complemented, or A, B, C, D, where C is complemented, or A, B, C, D, where B, C, D are complemented, or A, B, C, D, where these are complemented again, or A, B, C, D, where B and D are complemented. Okay, great. So these are a sum of product terms. You can see all the literals that are complemented or not complemented. We could make a 16 row truth table and figure out what inputs correspond to these literals. Or I like to do this little shortcut, and that is um, wherever I see a literal that's complemented, I just put a zero underneath it. So this gives me zero, 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 one. So now I know that uh, the location of my truth table is going to be where A and B is 0 and C and D is 0, 1. So that's going to be this min term 1 location. So then for the next one, this gives me 0, 0, 1, 1. Continuing on, 0, 0, 1, 0. This is 1, 1, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0. Again, I have a duplicate term. And here this is 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so um, now I can easily just kind of use this little cheat in that I can look at these numbers here and that's going to correspond to mappings on my K-map. Um, if we're using Boolean algebra, you notice we have some duplicates right here. And we know that anything ORed with itself is just that original anything, so it means we don't need to have two, just one is sufficient. 
Um, so let's go ahead and put this in our kmap and see how this function reduces. So I'm going to construct my kmap with a and b on the left side and c and d above. And my input combinations for a and b are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. That needs to be in gray code. Same story up here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now I can start filling in my table based on all of those zeros and ones that I wrote from the literals. So I'm going to have um, a 1 wherever I have this input combination. So 0, 0, 0, 1 is here. I have a 1 at 0, 0, 0, 1. And then at 0, 0, 1, 1, there's a 1 there. At 0, 0, 1, 0, there's a 1 there. And at 1, 1, 0, 0, there's a 1 there. 1, 1, 0, 1 has a 1. 1, 0, 0, 0 has a 1. 1, 0, 0, 0, there's my duplicate. I don't need to write 1 twice. And then 1, 0, 1, 0 has a 1. And everywhere else I know is going to be a 0. So I can fill in my Carnot map like this. Okay, great. So now I'm ready to do my bit groupings. So here I've got a group of 2. I'm going to go ahead and group these two together with my blue pen. And now um, this one here is next to it. I could just kind of write them as a single digit, but then I don't get the benefit of a reduction. So even though this one here is with the blue group, go ahead and use it for grouping this one also. Um, next I have, um, here's a group of two. Even though we have three bits all next to each other, we're not allowed to group three bits. We can only group in, in uh, twos and fours and eights and sixteen. It has to be in the form of two to the n. Um, so if I make this orange group here, I still have to group this one with something. I can either um, group it with this one, or maybe a better choice would be doing a wraparound grouping with this one down here. And wraparound grouping vertically and horizontally is allowed. Okay, great. So now we're ready to um, go through it and write out um, the literals for all these groupings. So first for blue, what do we have for blue? Well, we have that A is equal to 1, and B is equal to 1, and C is equal to 0, and D can be either. Okay, so to give us this group, this blue group of 1s, we look over here at this row, and we have A is 1, B is 1, and then we look up here at these columns, and what is, um, what is common between this column and this column? Well, C is 0 in both of these cases, and D is either 0 or 1, so that's why I write either. So anytime you have an either, that means D actually gets to be reduced out of our um, product term, because it doesn't matter. It could be either 0 or 1. So this product term ends up being A and B and C not. Okay, great. So now let's do the pink. For the pink group here, um, what do I have? I have A for this pink group is 1 in both those cases. I have B can be either 1 or 0, and I'll get this group here. So that's either. I have C is 0, and I have D is 0. So this product term is going to be A. I don't need a B because it can be either 0 or 1, but I need C to be 0 and I need D to be 0. So I put complements on those literals. Okay, moving on to so the orange group. For orange, I look at what conditions give me this orange group. I have A is 0 and B is 0. A is 0, B is 0, and then up here I have C can either be 0 or 1, and I'll have 1's in this orange group, so C is either, that means we can reduce it out, and D has to be 1 or 1, so D is 1. So my um, literals are A not, B not, D, and there's no C in this term because it got reduced out. Okay, and then finally my green group, So for green, I have, um, what makes this green group two, true? Well, let's look at A. So between these two rows, I have A is zero and A is one. So that means A can really be either zero or one. B has to be 
zero. So it's zero in both of those cases. And then for as for looking at the column, I have C is one and D is zero to give me that column. C is one and D is zero. So my literals are B naught, C, D naught. And I don't have an A in there because it can be either zero or one, so it doesn't matter. So then what I do is I take all of these product terms that I reduced from my K map and I just simply add them together. So my reduced F function is going to be B naught C D naught or A B C naught or A C naught D naught or A naught B naught D. So you can see this is a substantial simplification from all of these product terms down to just these. These are all um, like basically four input AND gates and here we just have three input AND gates and we have four of them instead of all of these. So let me know if you have questions about making the four input um, Carnot map. Um, in the next video I'll show you another example of making a four input Carnot map from um, a min term and max term representation.